everybody. How are you doing? It's me, Angie B, the Green Guardian Chick. Today is the 1st of January, and I am so tired of cooking, cooking, cooking. I love it, but I'm really tired of cooking. So today, um, for the first of the year meal, we're going to do something simple that goes a long way, and I'm going to take you through some of the steps to make homemade gumbo. Come on! Okay, so we're back. We have finished, completed the chopping of the onions and celery and peppers. You see? Nice and fine. Okay. I just threw it in one bowl because I didn't want to mess up a lot of different dishes. So then I'm going to take it over to the, let's see if I can bring you a little bit closer here. Uh, can you see? All right. So I'm basically going to put all of my onions and um, peppers there. Sorry about all that. Alright. And I'm um, going to scrape the rest of it out. And what you can always do is, um, you know, rinse it a little bit, save some, and to put in the compost. Nothing, nothing goes to waste here, ever. I mean, honestly. My kids get on me sometimes because I will, like, dry my hands, my clean hands on a towel, paper towel, and I'll lay it out. Is that sustainable or what? <laughs> So, um, next thing we're going to do is cut the okra. You see my nice uh, sealer? Kept everything nice and no frozen frostbite or anything like that. So then I'm going to chop up the okra. And everybody doesn't like okra. I don't know why okra is like super super good it's really nutritious it's great so we'll chop up the okra and I'm not gonna chop it up super fine because you know I want people who don't like it to see it and then they can not scoop it up in the in the uh, in their bowl okay And it doesn't matter, it's, I mean, if it was really super, um, it looks like I'm struggling, but I'm not. My hands are hurting a little bit. Um, I mean, I'm struggling, but the food is not a struggle. Um, so what was I going to say? Oh, um, some of the okra that I kept was, you know, nice size okra and usually big okra is not all that good to eat because it's kind of tough but it doesn't matter in this instant because it's going to cook simmer slow cook whatever you want to call it um for two hours after i put everything in and uh let it do its thing okay so, now, I want to show you, I talked about the cheesecloth. Well, you know, I didn't find my cheesecloth, but that's okay, because this is a very clean, uh, brand new face cloth of this towel. So, what I did was, I put everything, my boil things in here, my garlic, a little bit of onion, my bay leaves, and some pepper in here 
and I'll just um, close it up and you know, keep everything. So vegetables that we buy from the store that we can't grow or whatever, and keep the rubber bands. <laughs> so now I'm just gonna put it around here. And when the time is right, I'm gonna scrunch it up. That's the bay leaves. The garlic is not crunching. It's just a whole piece of garlic. So then when the time is right, I'm gonna put it in so it can boil and the juices, the flavor from the bay leaf and the pepper and the garlic will emit throughout the, the broth, but it won't um, be bits and pieces in the, in the stew so, um, or in the gumbo. Um, water, fluid, liquid, whatever you want to call it, and uh, it'll be good. Okay, so I'm gonna take some cayenne pepper, and how much am I gonna use? How much am I gonna use, Miss Brooks? Let's see. Um, I am going to use this is a fourth cup. I'm going to use, I guess it would be an eighth of a cup. Correct me, because it's been a long day. So I'm going to put some cayenne pepper in here. I want it flavorful, but I don't want it to burn everybody up. Okay. Then what I do is I take the cayenne pepper and I mix it in with the onions and the celery. Okay, so I'll let you see that. Okay, so I'm gonna mix it in. Really well. Then, like see my pretty face? <laughs> I got jokes. So then I'm going to stir it in and saute it. And what I have going on over there is some chicken parts that I had um, from various chicken that I, I actually grew those chicken, raised those chickens. I got to get my words right. Okay. So doing all this by myself you guys pray for me with these YouTubes okay um, so then I'm going to saute the onions and pepper some of the cayenne pepper and the jalapeno pepper that I put in there then I'm gonna use my filet okay all this is is sassafras, and I'm gonna use about, eh, it's about a teaspoon. So it's gonna be okay. So I'm gonna sprinkle that into my concoction over here that I'm stir frying. Then I'm gonna use some of my Old Bay Lemon seasoning. I'm gonna use a two table, well, yeah, I'm going to use two tablespoons because I'm making a big stock pot, remember? Um, so someone would say, man, she keeps leaving the screen. But this is real cooking. It's, I'm doing it, showing you as I'm going. You don't want me to fake you out, do you? So, and I make messes sometimes. So, going to sprinkle that in there. That was like a heap. Of, and this is not a tablespoon. Um, this is a teaspoon, but I'm putting a heap in here, which makes it a tablespoon. Y'all, I'm about as country as they get when it comes to a lot of things. So, we'll, uh, you'll get used to me. And if I'm saying something that is not quite to your understanding, let me know. And I will uh, see if I can figure out how to say it better. Um, get the point across, so to speak. Okay, so one of the last things we have 
outside of the seafood is, and all I'm gonna do is throw the seafood in the water. This is um, my tomatoes that I canned. So how do you know if your canned foods are good? One, just like a can in your cabinet, it has no give, okay? No air is in there. So undo it and to, to um, know for sure if it's good, especially if you don't see any mold or anything in there, um, the top will be hard to get off. So if it pops, it's good. If, it, if the seal has no pop, it's not any good. All right. Fresh is May 22nd. All right. So we got that one done. We got this one to do. This really saves, you know. Canning is awesome. Good. Yep. I smell it. Yep. It's good. I mean, you know, I know it's good, but there's no harm in checking to make sure that it's good. So we got that done. I'll come right back and I'll mix everything together and then we will see what it looks like in a bowl. All right? So take care. Hang on with me. I'll be right back. Okay, so now I'm going to make the roux. The roux basically is the gravy, the thickener for the gumbo. And what I've done is, I lift it up a little bit. I left a little bit of the onion and celery mix, and I poured the, un the oil in. Well, I left some of the oil in that I stir fried in. And I'm gonna take, so now it's browning. I'm gonna take the flour, I'm going to sprinkle it in, okay, sprinkle it in, I'm going to stir it, okay, let's see if I can let you see this, okay, so I'm stirring, and then turn it up a little bit, to, it was on two, I'm going to turn it up to six. Five. Okay, so it's thickening up. What you want to do is get it so that the flour is no longer dry. Okay, then I'm going to take a little bit of the juice that the um, chicken parts were boiling in for flavor. Okay. I'll do that a few more times. Okay. And it's going to cook. You don't want it to be gummy. You want it to be, um, get some more here. You want it to be juicy. Okay. And you don't want it to be lumpy. So I could get my whisk, but I'm not going to do it. And, um, okay, you guys like my music? I like to cook to classical music when I'm in the house. And, um, anyway, I like to do everything with classical music when I'm in the house. Okay, so I've taken my sack and I put it in my cooking concoction over there. I have my roux cooking. I need to be quicker with this because I don't want it to be clunky, clumpy, and gummy. Okay? So, the next thing is we're going to mix everything together and then put the seafood in and it's going to cook. Alright? Alright. And the crab leg. Gumbo. Okay, we're back. We're done. And it's all finished. So, 
Here is the finished product. Gumbo. I didn't put a crab leg in here yet because I'm gonna wait till later. But that's uh, how you make homemade gumbo. It's really easy. I know this video was a little bit longer, but it's really good. It goes a long way. And this is how we celebrate our New Year's. Bon appetit. Let's eat.